The first thing I do most of the time when I step outside my door, actually I won't even say most of the time, I'll say all the time, is look at the sky. I mean, as an astronomer, either as a solar astronomer or uh, an amateur astronomer interested in the nighttime sky, uh, I'm immediately checking conditions above as soon as I step out to some place that I can see it. Of course, I also live in a major urban area, I guess as you can hear from the traffic going by on the street, although it's not too bad right about now, um, is that this can really screw things up. So let's, um, let's go take a look at that. Okay, so this is looking to the south from, uh, from my apartment. And I guess most of what you see is just the lights along the, the way here. But let me zoom in and see if we can get a look at the sky itself. And I realize tonight it's cloudy. But the thing is, you always get this kind of sickly orange-purple glow. Any of you who live in an urban area probably know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't even matter if the sky is cloudy or not. You don't really see stars, you see this this glow. And it's a color that I don't think exists anywhere else. So here's what I get if I look towards Century City and towards downtown LA. Nothing but this glow. And this is a problem, and you'll, you'll probably laugh when you hear the term for it, based on all the other problems that people are causing on this planet, but it's called light pollution. And you may say, light pollution? What the heck? But when you think about it, every culture before industrial times had a pretty much unfettered view of the night sky. It was one thing that kept all of humanity in touch with each other. It was something we all had in common. And now there's so much information available from the night sky, but we really have to go to remote areas to get it, or we have to go into space. Typically, if we could get rid of all this glow, if looking off in this direction, you would see Mount Wilson, which was one of the premier observatory sites in the U.S. Uh, until Los Angeles expanded the way it did. And now it's still good for some things, but you just don't get the night sky up there that you uh, that you used to. Here's a bit more of the view of the uh, glow to the south. Again, I guess it doesn't come through very clearly but it's just this icky orange purple. Even looking off in the direction of the Pacific Ocean, which is only a few miles in that direction, you still have this pervasive glow. And I know you're thinking, why are you worried about light pollution with all that else, you know, everything else that we're doing? I think everybody has a right to be able to look up and see the stars. I think everybody has a right to feeling this common experience of viewing the night sky without interference. So currently, to get away from light pollution, we have to go to remote areas or spend hundreds of millions or billions of dollars to put telescopes in space to get some of the views that we could generate on Earth with adaptive optics. Now granted, there are some wavelengths that don't penetrate Earth's atmosphere, but there's some money, I think, that, uh, that could be saved through this, this initiative. But more so than that, what if we all had the experience of when we walked outside, we looked up, and all felt that sense of awe, that sense of wonder, maybe that sense of smallness, and that sense of even togetherness that we're all on this one tiny rock around a fairly bright yellow star, often the one arm of a galaxy, instead of looking up and seeing this orange-purple glow.